In this week's report, we have updates from Lake Champlain and Lake Winnipesaukee, Haddock in the Gulf of Maine, Big Sea Bass, and Fluke in Buzzards Bay. Sea bass season finally opening up in Rhode Island, some jumbo porgies and striped bass to 60 pounds blasting through Long Island Sound, and of course, an update on the Coastal Kayak Clash leaderboard. Let's check it out. The fishing news is sponsored by these fine partners. Hey there, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine with this week's web video fishing forecast for New England. Well, this week we get updates from uh, way up north in New England all the way on down to southern New England. So let's jump right into it. Going to start off, of course, uh, way up north this week, starting off with Todd Cloutier. He uh, sent me an email. We were just talking before I came out and shot the video. Uh, he was fishing the LCI Fishing Derby on Lake Champlain over the weekend with his son, Tyler, when he made a somewhat unexpected catch. Tyler did, that is, landing a tiger muskie. Now, I was talking to uh, Todd about this, and he said the two of them do obviously a lot of pike fishing. Having them in the, had them in the magazine as well as past video reports many times with some really nice pike, both caught locally in Connecticut as well as up north. And he said over the years, it's a rare catch, but every couple of years, maybe every four or five years, they do land a muskie. So that's really cool. So congrats on that uh, surprise catch this weekend. And then staying up north, uh, Tim Moore, Tim Moore Outdoors. He checked in this week. We were touching base on how things are going, and he said uh, guiding is, is wide open right now. He said that, that everybody is just amped up, psyched to get out fishing, so business has been very, very busy. Um, he said fishing hasn't been spectacular as far as numbers on the ex the salmon that he's catching right now in Lake Winnipesaukee, but they're making up for it with the solid size of the fish uh, a lot of fish a lot of a lot of landlocks up to 23 inches and they're also getting some really big rainbows mixed in with them up to four pounds on recent charters I want to say the most productive technique has been trolling streamers on lead core line with planer boards to take the, the baits out away from the bait, the boat excuse me and the fish have been sitting down about 25 feet or so um, he said he's been so busy up there, he hasn't even been able to get back down to Buzzards Bay where he was doing some really good sea bassing off of his kayak recently. Um, he was able to put it together a really cool video, however. You can check it out right now. Um, the link is in the upper corner of the video right now. You're better off check it out when the video is done. Uh, then, then head on over and give it a look. Really cool seeing some of the sea bass and blackfish action that Tim had when he was, again, fishing off of his kayak. It was an old town... Um, it's a very same old town uh, kayak, the Sportsman uh, Autopilot 136 that we're giving away in the Coastal Kayak Clash, which we'll talk about in a minute. But nonetheless, Tim has been working on his, so check it out in the video right there. All right, speaking of all those black sea bass that he was getting in Buzzards Bay, I've been hearing a lot of good reports coming in. Uh, Greg Angel, he sent me a pair of photos from a recent trip he made sailing out of Westport, Massachusetts. He was sailing with his daughter, Brooke. Now, I don't know if you recall last season, had a really good, cool picture. Brooke actually led it to Bonita at one time. Well, she was back at it with another two for not on the same cast this time, but she got a really nice uh, big black sea bass as well as a five pound 12 ounce of fluke to top off the cooler on a recent outing and one more note up in buzzards bay talking about some nice fluke heard from michael balzarini he checked with me just as we headed into the weekend he had been out late last week for some bottom fishing in buzzards bay and got into some pretty good fluke biggest one going 5.6 pounds now the waters of buzzards bay all the way on out past the islands to nantucket right now are doing pretty good for fluke talked to a couple of guys that went up past nantucket this weekend and got into some really good numbers of fish as well uh, changing gears a little bit, but sticking out one more item up in a base day. Steve Schott sent me an email over the weekend. Um, he was doing a little Father's Day haddock fishing. He was fishing out past Graves Lighthouse outside on the outer edge of Boston Harbor. Said he's working about 220 feet of water and easily got into his limit. Now, he did know uh, he's been fishing up there quite a bit lately, and the fish have moved a bit deeper. He was hitting them in about 170 feet for a while, but now, again, it was a little over 200, 220 range, but nonetheless, the fish are there. They're charged up and they are feeding. Moving down on into Rhode Island. 
finally can say black sea bass season is open as of june 24th in rhode island obviously it's been open in massachusetts in connecticut it opened this tuesday this week in new york water so now everywhere in rhode island is open we got it everywhere and that's good because there's been a lot of throwback sea bass on the fluke trips of late with some big fish i'm hearing four even five pound fish having to get tossed back which is painful nonetheless going forward they will they can and will end up in the coolers however um and as far as a fluke Fluke Ashman has been pretty good. Uh, talk to the guys over at the Francis Fleet. Uh, you know, some days they got to work for it, but they are going to put you on the fish nonetheless. And the, the pool fish this week were in that seven to just over eight pound class. So some solid fluke nonetheless. And they're also selling both on their full day as well as they've started the half day trips now. So you've got multiple options to get out on the fluke grounds and add in some sea bass in Rhode Island now. And sliding down into Connecticut. Um, I just swung by to see the guys over at J&B Tackle, talked to them a little bit, got a couple of things, I had to restock, and while I was there, we were talking about the um, this coming weekend, the 2020 Niantic Shark Week. It kicks off this Sunday, June 28th, and continues through Sunday, July 5th. Um, They've got 10 different price categories, blues, makos, threshers, all different Calcuttas, what have you. Uh, registration remains open through 627. That's this Saturday night at 10 p.m. So if you'd like to get some more info, of course, if you want to sign up and get in on this awesome shark tournament, head on over to tristatesshootout.com. Sign up today. There's a tab right there for the 2020 uh, Niantic Shark Fest. And if, however, shark fishing is not your game, the porgy bite is still lights out over in Peconic Bay. Heard from Cac Captain Greg of the Black Buck. Obviously, he's getting out all the time. Uh, boat would be right across from me right now, but he is out on the grounds hammering those mega hubcap-sized porgies, the jumbos as they call them, and they've been just loading up on the fish. And what's even better, they've been getting some striped bass mixed in, some fluke, of course, and they've been throwing back sea bass up until Tuesday. As I noted earlier, these sea bass seasons are now open over New York waters so they can keep them as well and there has been plenty of them to catch to go along with those big old porgies and then uh, one more fishing item we've got it's talking about striped bass now I, I keep saying it every single week it's like a broken record that the fish are on the move in Long Island Sound you'll get them today you're probably not gonna get it for the next three days or just because you didn't get them today doesn't mean they're not gonna be there tomorrow and again, everybody I've talked to has confirmed this. Touch base with BJ Kogan over the weekend. Uh, he, he pointed out exactly this fact. He went out one trip, for an example, last week. Fished for about an hour and a half. He and his buddy had six fish over 40 pounds with BJ's biggest fish of the day right around that 50 pound mark, which nothing wrong with that. However, he was not taking top honors as Dan Taylor was the high hook for the day with a mega bass pushing the 60 pound mark that of course was caught and released. Um, but they had this awesome bite just outside the Connecticut River. And the next couple of days, it was dead. Three, four days after that, Buddy was in the same area, said he got one fish in the uh, upper 40 inch class, and that was it. So that's just how it's been. It, the, the bass are on the move, but you know, and on the one hand, it drives you to continue to keep out, and you know you never know, it's, at least it's been my problem, never know what night I can pass on, but hey, uh, the fish are around, they're on the move. Soon enough, we should be settling into, hopefully, the summer patterns and be a little bit more consistent of a bite. And then one more thing, last up this week, before I let you go, we get an update of the standings of the Fisherman Magazine's inaugural Coastal Kayak Clash. Now, first off, I want to thank everybody who's been participating so far. The, the participation level has been gone above and beyond what I had hoped for, what we had hoped for, excuse me. We really thought it was going to take off, but had no idea just how many people were going to participate. Of course, it's very simple to enter. you got to be an existing, current, in good standing subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine, whether that's a print or a digital only. Either way, head on over to thefisherman.com right now and get your subscription going. Then it's free registration. Just log in to the tab on the upper left-hand corner of the uh, fisherman.com, enter your email address, and you are good to go. Participate on your way to winning a brand new Old Town kayak powered by Minn Kota. It's a sick ride. I've got one of my own. You will not be disappointed. But as of right now, we got some shakeups on the leaderboard. The top spot is still in place with New England angler Justin Ozer. He, now, he upgraded his first place fluke. You can do that. You can enter bigger fish and climb up higher. You still retain you know, position. For instance, he's in first. He can't get any higher than that, but he can hit a larger fish. And that's what he did this week with a 26 and a quarter inch fluke. 
awesome fish right there. But he also added on a blue fish to increase his overall score as well. He had a 21 inch blue. That puts him in the second place in the chopper category. So uh, we've also, you know, he, he's holding down first place, but there is a lot of time to go. The tournament started back in May. It runs through the end of November. We've got uh, eight categories, nine different species, plenty of options for you to get out there and fish. All you got to do is be a Fisherman Magazine subscriber and then register and then get out and fish on your kayak and of course catch an eligible species, take a photo and submit it. You'll be on your way to winning that awesome new Old Town Kayak. Of course, check out all the complete details on the tournament right now at thefisherman.com. All right, well, there you have it. Uh, again, we've got the, the Big Shark Tournament coming up this weekend, so head on to tristateshootout.com to get full details on that. And for all of the other information to set up and plan your weekend ahead, be sure to start off by visiting thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.